Are you certain that nothing is hiding in your IT environment right now? Well, we're going to help you find out in this episode of To The Point. Hello, I'm Maggie Miller. Many companies use endpoint detection and response tools, also known as EDR tools, to protect their environments from bad activity. But these tools can also fall short. Tanium security expert Nir Yosha is here to break down some misconceptions of EDR tools and how you can protect your environment and your organization from attackers, no matter where they're hiding. So welcome, Nir. Hey, Maggie. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And EDR is a very relevant topic, so I'm happy we're talking about it today. Yeah, so first off though, just tell us what are EDR tools? Yeah, so EDR stands for Endpoint Detection and Response. This term actually was coined by Gartner in 2013. And the idea was to fill a gap in the market around antiviruses and endpoint protection that EDRs were supposed to do. EDR is, you know, it mentioned by Gartner as an endpoint solution that can provide detections of malicious activities, relevant context, and response on those activities by blocking. And this is more or less what vendors are giving in the market. Of course, different vendors will interpret it a little bit differently, but on the most part, EDRs are looking at information that can be detected basically on known bads and what i mean by that is signatures or some kind of machine learning that can define a file as malicious or benign one of the misconceptions we hear is that edr tools are the most effective tools for proactive hunting is that the case yeah so that's that's a very known misconception in the market EDR tools are good, as I mentioned, with the known bads, but not so much with the unknown bads. And on the most part, proactive hunting looks for those unknowns, those zero days, or those attacks that are in memory. Those are fileless attacks that most likely the EDRs won't be able to detect. Most part, the attackers are leveraging living off the land tools that are legitimate, but they're using them for malicious activities. And so EDRs cannot really help here. They're more related to the IOCs, the indicators of compromise, like malicious IP addresses or malicious hash files, but not to the high end of the pyramid where we're looking at the tactics and techniques used by those advanced attacks. Another misconception we hear is that EDR reduces the workload for security operation analysts. Is this the case? Yeah, that's a, another great example of um, a misconceptions because yes, there are some cases where EDR can automatically protect and block some of the malicious activities, but on average, EDR is generating thousands of alerts that getting into the security operations seem solutions and need to get some attention. So it's quite the opposite. A lot of time, the security analyst will need to look for other tools in order to get more context. And if you look at just 10 minutes for each one of the alert, we see this alert fatigue, which many organizations just don't get to the bottom of the alert list by the end of the day. And another misconception, EDR provides capabilities for full response and remediation. So while EDRs can help in some of the activities related to incident response, that's not the default go-to tool. If we're looking at identifying what all are the signals that were used during an attack, a lot of time EDRs don't have this whole history track record to answer the question. And if you're looking at the uh, IT incidents response cycles, we're looking at scoping. So you need a tool that can really help with scale and speed of scoping the incident, understanding where are the attackers in the attack phases, how many machines already being infected, and how quickly we can isolate it. And then post-attack activities. When, when I say post-attack, I mean how we can learn out of this attack and understand what was taken, how it was taken, 
answer those questions so we can prevent similar situations in the future. So how do security teams protect their environment when some of these EDR tools are falling short? Security teams need to look for or rely on other tools that can help them with the pre-attack the and hunting and the post-attack, the incident response. And solutions actually like the Telnium platform can help them. And Telnium has a solution around threat response that allows customers to ask those questions and find those attackers that hide and are not detected by EDRs. We have a very flexible way to ask questions and adjust those questions as new threats and new vulnerability coming out. In addition to that, during a breach, and let's face it, it's not a question of if, but when you're going to be breached, we can look at specific scoping and ask questions to see whether the, the specific attack is already spread, whether there is lateral movement or exfiltration and help to isolate the environment that is already infected in real time at scale and speed. And finally, incident response will want to get, gather all those forensics for analysis post-infection this is for them to understand what was taken, how the attackers was operated, and how we can prevent similar attacks in the future. So yeah, there are solutions out there like Tenium that can help you to basically have a better together story with the EDRs. They're still an important part of your security toolkit, but they cannot have a full story without those additional tools. Yeah, so it sounds like EDR tools with Tanium help give you that certainty that you're protected from attackers. Correct. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information and insight today, Nir. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Maggie. And thank you all for watching. I'm Maggie Miller, and this is To The Point.